this video, we're going to see how to set up the file properly in Maya, and we're also going to see how to work with the undistorted footage. Remember that during the camera solve, we also asked PFTrack to undistort the footage, and it did. So in this video, we're going to see how to take the footage, the undistorted one, and bring it into Maya. In the previous video, we saw how to export the scene properly into the format that we need, and that format was for Maya. Here I have Maya 17 open. So now what we're going to do, we're going to open up the file that we exported. So file, open scene, and here I redirected Maya to read the folder in which I exported into, and I'm going to click on open. Now it's kind of hard to see on the background the trackers themselves, but I would like to focus on the grouped PF data, which stands for pixel farm data. And here you have two other sub objects. You have the camera itself, and you have the group that consists of the point cloud. And it's a little bit hard to see them on this bright background. I can, of course, choose the combination of keyboard keys Alt and B in order to change the background. But the best next thing would be to basically take the group, go into the layer editor, and here just create a simple display layer, which already includes the object that has been selected because I clicked on this button here double click on the name and then change the name to render cam which means that this is going to be the layer that consists of the camera that is going to be rendered out. So I'm going to change the color to this yellow and hit save and now it's easy for me to see where my trackers are. Before we start laying down any kind of set fitting the next thing we need to do is properly set up the camera and its attributes. So if I'm going back to the outliner and I'm selecting the camera and I'm going to its attributes right here. The two things I need to set up first is the near clip and the far clip. These numbers will determine the minimum distance from the lens and the maximum distance from the camera's lens until clipping occurs. So the near clip is going to be 0 0.01 and the far clip I'm going to add a couple more zeros to it. The fit resolution gauge should be on overscan and change the film fit offset to one. This way we'll know that the image plane is going to be dead center. If we go up here to the camera plane, and this is where the image is going to be, you'll notice that the display is in all views. So what we need to do is change the display to looking through camera. Display mode should be RGB because we're not interested to see any kind of alpha if there is any alpha. And we will deal with this in a moment, the image name and the image number. But before that, I'm going to scroll down into the placement. And under the placement, one of the most important attributes that needs to be changed is the depth. The depth will determine how far the image plane from the camera would be. So with the depth of a thousand, it's pretty good, but I'm not sure how big my geometry is going to end up. And this is the proxy geometry. This is the geometry in which we're going to help the camera to be in the right place within the 3D space. So just to be on the safe side, I'm going to add another zero and have the depth at 10,000. And now we can scroll back to the image name and we need to make sure that the footage is being piped down throughout the proper file path. It is also important to know that the use image sequence should have a check mark and here the image number should be the image number of the frame you are on. At this point of the workflow, there are two problems in which we need to tackle first before we start building our geometry or the proxy geometry, I should say. And that is that the footage itself that is being read into the image name is not the undistorted footage. To remind you, we used the camera solver within PFTrack to estimate the lens distortion. And the second problem is the timeline. We all know that the footage that we worked with in this introduction course is about 48 frames. And the camera itself, if we highlight it, we'll see that its animation on all its channels stops at 48. So this is going to be an easy solution. So what we need to do is basically change the out point of the timeline from 250 to 48. So now we have the camera's animation ranged in the proper length of a timeline. And now to solve the other problem, and that is the redirection of the footage into the footage that is undistorted. Because if we look at the camera now, so I'm going to the top view, and under the perspective, I'm going to look through my camera, I notice that some of these trackers may not be in the right place. And that is because I am not using the undistorted footage. So for that, we're going to have to go back into the expert node in PF track and 
export the footage as an undistorted footage. And let me show you how it's done. So back at PF Track, you'll notice that in the export node, right here on the right, there's two tabs, clip export and distortion export. The distortion export is meant to export PFB files, which are PF Track barrel files that will not distort the footage, but will give the distortion information that can later on be included in software such as Nuke. But for now, and for this level, what we need to do is actually go to the clip export. Here, if I put a check mark on the houses, I will be able to export my footage with the distortion already included. And this footage will be attached to the camera within Maya. So make sure that the path is where you want it to be. And if I double click on the path, it will give me the option to give my sequence a new name. If I don't give it a name, it gives it default name and the path where it's supposed to be. And by default here, the path is gonna be under the root folder of your project. And you can also determine how much frame padding you have. And if you have a check mark on the source, means that it's gonna keep the same frame padding that you have on your image and the file format itself. But since this is gonna be proxy footage that is going to be carried out with the file, I'm not gonna export it as a PNG file. So I'm gonna call this houses, capital UD for undistorted dot, and I'm gonna choose a different path for it. And that path would be under the footage itself. I'm just gonna give it the undistort subfolder by clicking on this button and then entering the name. I'm gonna say choose. And the file format is not gonna be a pass through, but I'm going to change it to JPEG. And now I can close this floating window and click on export clip. And PF track will go throughout the export process and we'll write 48 files that have distortion on them. If I would choose to work in Maya with the distorted footage, then I'll have a very hard time setting up my proxy geometry properly because here the image looks a bit different than what we started with. So let's jump back to Maya and redirect the footage. So we saw how to take the file that PF Track has exported into Maya and how to set it up over there properly. We also saw how to relink the undistorted footage. But the work doesn't end there. The next step would be to actually create some proxy geometry in order to have the proper perspective within Maya's 3D space.